one believes. Walked to his car in the dark, got out his keys. His old ragged bottle, he placed on the seat by his side. Prayed out loud to the Lord and started to try. He said, carry me, Jesus. Carry me home. Lord, I've done my best. Now you do the rest and carry me home. Carry me, Jesus. Carry me home. Lord, I've kept the faith and I finished my race. Now carry me home. Week after week, year after year, this went on. Thousands were saved, many touched, then he was gone. But a friend of mine told me he was there by his bed. He said, Mike, you should have heard the last words that old preacher said. He said, carry me, Jesus. Carry me home. Lord, I've done my best. Now you do the rest and carry me home. Carry me, Jesus. Carry me home. Lord, I've kept the faith and I've finished my race. Now carry me home. You've carried me oh so many times. My Lord, I wouldn't have made it on my own. So when I leave this world behind, my Lord, would you carry me? Carry me home, carry me, Jesus, carry me home, Lord, I've done my best, now you do the rest in carrying me home, carry me, Jesus. Mm -hmm. Carry me home. Lord, I've kept the faith and I finished my race. Now carry me home. Carry me, Jesus. Carry me. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for carrying us. Amen. If you have your Bibles, look with us in Mark chapter 6, verse 30. Mark chapter 6, verse 30. Amen. When it's gone on long enough. When it's gone on long enough. Mark chapter 6, verse 30. Amen. And I will also refer to it sometimes as you've got to move on. Amen. 
as the struggles, troubles, pains, and problems of these last days continue as the intensity of the battle, amen, gets more intense, you're going to need to lean on your faith in God more, amen. We definitely live in the last days, perilous times, but I'm excited about it, amen. Anybody that serves God and follows the news has got to have some level of excitement on the inside of everything that's going going on, amen. And I don't mean to gloat in anybody in hardship, you know, and I'm just not sitting around talking, if something bad happens, go like, yeah, you know, hey. but still I'm excited where we are in the kingdom of God and where we're lined up in the Bible. Just stay close to the Lord, amen, and fight off everything that you can and do what you need to do to stay close to God. The Bible said in King James Version, Mark chapter 6, verse 30, and the apostles gathered themselves together unto Jesus and told him all things, both what they had done and what they had taught. And he said unto them, Come ye yourselves apart into a desert place, rest for a while, for there were many coming and going, and they had no leisure so much as to eat. They departed into a desert place by ship privately. And the people saw them departing, and many knew him, ran afoot thither out of all cities, and outwent them. That means they outran them, they got there first, and came together unto him. And Jesus, when he had came out, saw much people and was moved with compassion toward them because they were as sheep, not having a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. And when the day was now far spent, the disciples came to him and said, This is a desert place. Now the time is far past. Send them away that they may go into the country round about, into the villages and buy themselves bread, for they have nothing to eat. Father, we love you, we praise you, we God, we thank you for the power of your word that transforms us, it changes us, it challenges us often, God, but nevertheless, it never leaves us the same. We just love you, we praise you, we appreciate you, thank you, God, for allowing us to be in your house once again. In Jesus' name, the church said amen, you may be seated. I'm going to read Mark chapter 6, verse 30 uh, through 36 in the message version, then I'm going to preach it, so just stay with me for a moment. The apostles then rendezvoused with Jesus and reported on all that they had done and taught. Jesus said, come off by yourselves, let's take a break and get a little rest. For there was constant coming and going. They didn't even have time to eat. So they got in a boat, went off to a remote place by themselves. Someone saw them going and the word got around from the surrounding towns, went out on foot running. They got there ahead of them. When Jesus arrived, he saw a huge crowd at the side of him. His heart broke like a sheep with no shepherd they were. He went right to work teaching them. When his disciples thought this had gone on long enough, I mean, that's good stuff to me. It was now quite late in the day. They interrupted. We are a long way out of the country, and it's very late. Pronounce a benediction, send these folks off so they can get supper. Jesus said, you do it. Amen. I got a little word for you, amen, that you can give somebody. You do it. Next time somebody barks something to you to take the trash out, do it, say, you do it. If it's good enough for Jesus, it's good enough for you, amen. That's just a little, amen, a little humor on a commercial. Father, we love you. We thank you so much. God, touch us tonight. Thank you for the power of your word in Jesus' name. Everybody said amen when it's gone on long enough. Amen. Real quick, real briefly, the first part of Mark chapter 6 is the beheading of John the Baptist. We understand that Jesus loved him. Nobody on earth, amen, like John. Jesus even gave him accolades and gave him a pat on the back and said there's nobody born of a woman greater than John the Baptist. All of a sudden, John has been beheaded. Jesus loved him, and we see Jesus move on. We know he's hurt, amen. His heart is hurt. His spirit may be a little broken, amen, but he moved on. The Bible said in Mark chapter 6, verse 30, then the apostles, they rendezvoused with Jesus and reported on all that they had done and taught. They had a rendezvous with Jesus. Amen. They was living in some bad times, but they still had a good time with God. I don't know what you're going through. Amen. I just know that you can give God a praise break right in the middle of all your pain. I know you can give God a praise break right in the middle of all your problems. They had a rendezvous with God. I don't know who I'm preaching to tonight. Amen. You might as well go on and stand up and shake it off and praise it off and move that heavy garment and let God know that you're in the house to give him some glory anyway. 
So the Bible said they reported on all that they had done and taught. They reported, amen, this is kind of, amen, the symbolism of this is prayer, talking to God, just giving God a report, amen, when you walk in your prayer chamber, you can report to God, amen, all, all, all the troubles that you have, you can tell God all the problems you have with people, all the little things you don't like about me, you can take in your prayer chamber and tell God. That's good stuff. Just see, just see if you're staying with me tonight. Amen. And the Bible said, Jesus said, come off by yourselves. Let's take a break and get a little rest. Now, this is Jesus saying, come off by yourself. Let's take a little break and get some rest. Now, now, now we know that they were all together. There was going to be 13 of them. But he said, come off by yourself. Every now and then, you got to get alone by yourself. Every now and then, you need some you time. Every now and then, amen, you just need to leave, it, leave everybody alone. You need to untap, unplug, amen, cut everything off and just get along with God. You need some quiet time, amen. There's nothing wrong with needing a rest. There's nothing wrong with taking a break. Everybody gets tired. Even the strong get tired, amen. One of the most hurtful things about being strong is nobody ever thinks to check on you. One of the dangers about being strong and all Always being faithful and always being there is nobody ever considers to check on give God some praise anyway the danger in being strong is often it's a lonely place and often it's a place amen that you feel neglected that nobody cares that's not the case it's not that nobody cares it's just that they expect you to be strong with somebody give God praise tonight Jesus said, come off by yourselves. Let's take a little break, get a little rest. We find Jesus in Scripture, Sister McAdoo. The Bible said he was on the way to Samaria, and the Bible said weary with his journey, he sat down on a well. Tired from the journey, tired from being on the road, just wore out, he sat down. There's nothing wrong with taking a break. Amen. There's dangers in making serious decisions when you're tired. There's dangers in making serious decisions when you're tired. There's dangers in going to the grocery store when you're hungry. Amen. You're going to buy some of everything. Amen. If you go too full, you ain't going to get nothing. So you kind of need to balance it out. Amen. Me and Teresa ate lunch not long ago, and we went to the grocery store. She said, what you feel like? I said, nothing. I feel like laying down and rubbing this big belly under the ceiling fan. That's what I feel like. So there's dangers, amen, in making, making permanent decisions in, 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 under drastic circumstances. And so that he said, come, let's take a break and get a little rest, for there was constant coming and going. They didn't even have time to eat. There's dangers in getting your plate so full, amen, that, 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 that your appetite's affected. This is a real thing. Amen. In Scripture, Jesus, amen, he's teaching, they're preaching, people's coming and going. John has been beheaded, but he's got to still give a positive word anyway. He's hurt in his spirit. His heart is broken. Amen. But he's still encouraging people around him. I heard Sister Linda, amen, making, making the comment during the introduction about saying things kind and being kind to people. Amen. I read one time that kindness is a language that deaf people can hear and blind people can see. It don't, it don't cost anything to be kind to somebody. You don't realize the people that you rub elbows with every day that's down and out, that Satan is trying to steal, amen, kill and destroy from people that are crippled, that all you got to be is kind, and it could change your whole day. This is good stuff, amen. So here, the Bible said they was going to take a break, get a little rest. They was constant coming and going. They didn't even have time to eat, amen. So many people, amen, their appetite is affected by seasons in their life. There's some people, either they, they undereat or overeat based on things that is happening, amen, their spirit. Some people, amen, they go to bed, but they never rest because their spirit is warring at night. And some people, because they're warring in the spirit, it has an effect on their appetite. This is good stuff, amen. And the Bible goes on to say in verse 32, so they got in. In a boat. A boat is a vehicle. I tell you all the time that Jesus often rode a donkey. Amen. He rode a jackass. He got in boats. Amen. One time he rode a cloud off of the Mount of Ascension. Elijah rode a chariot of fire. It was simply a vehicle. What is a vehicle to you? It's something or somebody that will take you places. Every now and then God will give you a relationship for a resource that will take you places. And what you got to be careful of is discerning what your vehicle is. And where it's going to take you. Will somebody give God praise? 
Amen. You have vehicles, and sometimes this vehicle comes in the form of a person. Amen. God will always introduce you to a relationship or resource that can take you somewhere. Amen. That can take you to another level. That can, amen, take you to another portal or another realm. Amen. That will strengthen you spiritually. God will introduce you, amen, to a place. It, 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 may, it may be a program that will be the vehicle. It may be an education, but nevertheless, it is a vehicle to get you from one place to another. Amen. Jonah got on a ship going to to Tarshish, then to Joppa. Amen. He boarded a ship. This was a vehicle in a negative direction. You got to be careful, amen, of getting on the wrong ship. You got to be careful of getting yoked up with the wrong person because friendships, kinships, memberships, scholarships, all these ships that we board, amen, are taking us somewhere. So the Bible said they got in a boat, went off to a remote place by themselves. <clears throat> to a remote place by themselves, someone saw them, looked at your neighbor and said, somebody always going to see you. This is God. And they saw him. <laughs> Please, he was trying to steal away privately. He, this is God trying to get away by himself. And <laughs> this is good stuff, man. You can't, you can't put it no other way than that. This is Jesus. He's telling them privately, quietly. He's like Uncle Joe Biden. He's whispering. He said, come on to a quiet place remotely. Let's, it, we, we need to take a little break. And somebody saw God. They're going to see you. <laughs> I got to get off here. Y'all ain't got me. I can't, even, I can't even look over there. And the Bible said, amen. Somebody saw him going, and word got around. It, it, this is amazing, man. This is amazing. Word. Somebody saw him. And, and word got around. They're going to see you, and word's going to get around. The Bible said it to shout from the rooftop. Amen. This, this is awesome. Word, word got around from the surrounding towns, and, and, and people went out on foot running and got there ahead of them. This is amazing, man. Let me tell you something. When, 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 when people want to run you down, <laughs> they're they going to do it. Now, now, this is God in the flesh trying to get off by himself. Somebody saw him. Word got around to other towns. They on a short little walk. And the Bible said they got there ahead of God. There's dangers in getting places ahead of God. There's dangers in getting ahead of God. This is good stuff. Amen. You wouldn't believe the times, amen, that we get impatient. And the Bible says, amen, in your patience possess ye your souls. There's times that we get ahead of God. Don't think, amen, there aren't times in our lives in the pulpit to the back door that we haven't got ahead of God, and we needed a miracle when he got there. We, we, we got ahead of God. We, a, 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 amen, we got ahead of God. We signed our name on something simply because it looked good, and amen, we, we, didn't, we didn't have a big enough check to pay for it, and we got ahead of God. We signed our name on houses, and our name was spouses, and we got ahead of God. You can get ahead of God. You can get ahead of God. And, and, and then need a miracle when he gets there. Let's, let's watch what happens. And they got there ahead of them. When Jesus arrived, this is good stuff, man. They got ahead of God. And, and then when Jesus arrived, have you ever got ahead of God? And, 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 you, and, and you felt fearful and afraid. You shouldn't feel fearful and afraid if God's there. Because it's, you got there ahead of him. And the Bible said when Jesus got there, he saw a huge crowd. And at the side of him, his heart broke. Like sheep with no shepherd. Now he gets there and his heart's broke. Amen. Don't think that God's heart isn't continually broken. Now God isn't like we are. When our heart's broken, usually every area of our life is affected by it. But God can have a broke heart concerning you. Amen. And joy is concerning her. I'm glad he's God. Amen. God's thoughts aren't our thoughts. His ways, not our ways. I thank God. Amen. That, that he's as powerful as he is because he keeps everything regulated. And the Bible said this broke God's heart because they were like sheep with no shepherd. I'm not going to talk about it long, but I want to talk to you real quick about the sheep and the shepherd. I, amen. A real shepherd. Amen. The Bible talks about a hireling. People that do what they do simply because of money. People do what they do simply because of convenience and comfort but they are people amen that do it because they love you they are people amen that'll be there with you through it all and the bible said jesus amen he went right to work teaching them this is amazing man a out of everything they needed everything they had going wrong and on what did he do he taught them he taught them because i say it all the time there's more to life than god 
There's more to life than salvation. And salvation, amen, is, is a one-time trip to the altar. Then you've got to live the rest of your life. Amen. If you got saved young at, at 15 and, and you lived to 100, amen, salvation was a one-time trip to the altar. But you got to be taught to learn how to live. you got to be taught out of your trouble. Amen. If you're not taught out of it, you will lay in it forever. Somebody give God praise. I thank God for the teaching. One regret that I have in school is not paying more attention. Amen. I'd be further along in life and possibly even in the kingdom if I had paid more attention to the teaching, amen, than what was going on somewhere else. And that's all I'll say about that. And the Bible said, amen, he went right to work teaching them. He went to work teaching his work. Teaching his work. To all the people that think, you know, you know I got a brother and he's kind of, he's kind of, he's got a hilarious, you know, he likes to tell jokes and cut up like I do. And he said that hard work has made policemen and preachers out of a bunch of people. I didn't like it either, Uncle Pat. But nevertheless, it's kind of funny. <laughs> but teaching is work and preaching is work. The Bible said that a workman is worthy of his hire. A workman is worthy of his hire. So Jesus went to work teaching them. And when his disciples thought that he had gone on long enough, isn't it amazing when somebody looks at you and, 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 and they don't know what you've got invested and, and they don't know what you've got going on, but they think they know more about you than you know about you. They thought that he had gone on long enough. They, they thought that he had gone, this has gone on long enough. Amen. This, this is awesome. It, it's amazing how people have put time limits on God. Amen. And think things have gone on long enough and they quit on God based on their timeline. And God's still doing a work. God is doing something greater than you can ever fathom. God is trying to save the whole family. And you worried about one little incident. Amen. You got to hang in there and hold on because God ain't done yet. There's times in your life that God ain't through yet. Amen. And we want to throw in the towel on when the disciples thought that Amen, this had gone on long enough. Amen, there's times, amen, that things go on long enough. Amen, but when it comes to God, you just got to wait it out. They that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up on wings like eagles, run and not be weary, walk and not faint. You got to wait on God. This is awesome, man. Amen, you got to wait on God. Amen, the Bible said it was now quite late in the day. They interrupted. Now, it's, it's getting late, and, and for all the people that it's getting late, a a amen, you, you, you better be doing all you can and, and canning all you can do, amen. There's, there's people that it's getting late in the day. There's people that the hourglass has turned over for the last time, and there's more sand in the bottom than the top, so you better be ready, amen. Give God praise. That's an exciting place to be. That is an exciting place to be. They, they interrupted God. They, 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 they interrupted. When the disciples thought that this had gone on long enough, they, they interrupted, they, they interrupted, amen, you, you, you don't want to interrupt God, amen, one, one person that you don't want to interrupt, you don't, I don't want to interrupt what God's doing, I don't, I don't want to get in the way of what God's doing, hey, this, this is awesome, man, there's, there's, there's times, amen, that I don't interrupt God, what, 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 what are you saying, there's times, amen, when I hear certain people like Sister McAdoo, when the Spirit's moving in the church and he's wanting to give out a message in tongues, amen, I, I get quiet, and, and God's getting some of you to the place that you can discern it, when Sister McAdoo or Taylor, amen, there's a strong tongue given, amen, things should hush, and what it is, the Spirit of God is trying to speak something from heaven, us specific word a tongue and an interpretation and you'll begin to feel more of it in the coming days because God wants to speak to his people God still I feel Holy Ghost amen God talks to his people and the Bible said they Jesus is teaching Jesus is heartbroken by amen the people because he looks at them and they like sheep with no shepherd and he still got this thing in the back of his mind about John the Baptist being beheaded but all of a sudden he's teaching them out of their troubles anyway and now the disciples, they interrupt him, and they say, we're a long way out in the country, and, and, and it's very late. They're they talking about the trip back and how late it's getting. They said, pronounce a benediction and send these folks off so they can get some supper. Amen. So, that, so, so now they simply interrupt him based on eating lunch. This is awesome, man. This is God in the flesh. This is Jesus Christ. The, the, the great rabbi teaching a message. And the disciples interrupt him and said, hey, it's time to eat. This is unreal. This blows my mind away, man. 
Jesus, his heart's broke, man. They, they got to they hear it in his voice. They, they got to see it on his countenance. And, and all of a sudden, they interrupt him. Hey, it, it, you know, it's quite late. It, we're a long way from home. These people, we hungry. You know, I, I had a preacher friend one time that said that in his church, when it was getting time for the sermon to close, that there that they was a, a big deacon sitting right there on the front row, and he'd look at his watch like that and tap it and look at the preacher. I said, I'd love for somebody to do me like that. <laughs> I said, we're going to be there. And we're going to be there till supper. I'm going to preach slam out of the anointing and come back in it by dark. <laughs> it, it, this, this is unbelievable. I, I mean, this is amazing, you know, th how, how this is unfolding. They interrupted him and said, we're a long way out in the country. It's getting late. Pronounce a benediction. Simply pronounce a benediction. Let's, let's, let's go through the ritual of it because it's time to eat. And they wondered why they had no power. They wondered why they couldn't cast demons out. They wondered. It's good stuff. This is awesome. This, this is good stuff. They wondered, amen, why they couldn't heal nobody. They came to him privately because they was ashamed and said, why couldn't we cast that demon out? Well, one reason is because you're watching your clock, worried about your belly. Give God some praise anyway. Pronounce a benediction, go through the motion, send these folks off so they can go get some supper. And Jesus said, you do it. It's awesome, man. I, I love this. You know, to the God that thought, amen, to the people that thinks, to, 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 to the people that thinks he's the God that just should succumb to what everybody wants and be what everybody wants and amen, that he turns the cheek to everything and that he's a doormat for all the people that decide they, he, you do it. You do it. I, I love that word, man. You do it. You're going to get some you do it this week. Mark chapter 6 said, you do it. <laughs> hey, it's awesome, man. This is good. Jesus said, you do it. <laughs> I don't know who you think you're bossing around, but you got the wrong cat. This is, man, this is awesome, man. This is good. I may get in trouble for this later, but right now, you do it. <laughs> he, he said, fix him supper. He said, you do it. He said, you fi he said fix some supper. He said, fix some supper. No, no, no need to leave. Amen. You, you, you should be the ba bread baker. You should have the word. God, this is awesome to me. Amen. I didn't know, I didn't know till you know, I, I put it off as long as I could because, you know, and, and I love Sister Linda and Taylor together because they're, they're a great tag team. And Sister McAdoo, everybody gets together and just makes it happen. And, and, and I simply called Taylor, texted her that morning and said, I got an emergency. Call me. And she called me back and, 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 I, said, and I said, I need you to preach. And, and she said, great, okay. And, 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 it, and it was awesome because you, you should be instant in season and out of season. You, you, you should be ready at all times. You should have a word and some bread ready to fix somebody's supper at all times. This is good stuff. Amen. Instant in season. Amen. Instant, instant in season is, is when you know a week ahead of time because it's, you in season and you know you're supposed to be there. It's your season. But when you instant out of season is when you get woke up at 5 o'clock in the morning and ain't got a word at all. And God just gives you one. That's awesome. So Jesus said, you do it. You fix supper for them. They replied, are you serious? Amen. <laughs> Thank God Taylor didn't say, are you serious? But, but the disciples said, are you serious? Now they're asking God if he's serious. Like, like, like he's a jokester or, 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 or a trickster. You know, you know God, what, are you playing games with me? And, you, you, and you know, there's times... Amen, that you wonder if God's playing games with you. These times, God does have a sense of humor. I've got to be careful going with this one. God, God does have a sense of humor. <laughs> hey, they say, are you serious? And, 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 and what, let's go a little further. He said, you want us to spend a fortune on, on food for their supper. Now, now they're worried about the price it takes to feed somebody. Man, this, this, this is good. They, Jesus says, you do it, fix them supper, and they say, are you serious? Are you, are you serious? God, you know, you know, God's got a sense of humor and God plays, but, but God don't play about serious stuff. God don't play about serious stuff. And here, they say, you, go, you want us to spend a fortune on feeding these people. And here, they nickel and dime in God, worrying about how much it costs. This is good stuff. I hear people complain all the time about how much a Bible costs. $100 ain't a lot compared to the price of your soul. 
Hunter, give God some praise anyway. Yeah, a good Bible costs $100, but quit complaining about it. Your fingernails cost that much. Come on, somebody. What, what, what is the price of your soul? This, this is awesome. Amen. They people complain about some all kind of stuff. Amen. Amen. They complain about gas prices going to church, but it costs the same to get a gallon of gas to go to Walmart than it does church. Amen. So they nickel and dime in God about what it costs to feed the people. And the Bible said, he, but he was quite serious. And he said, how many loaves, chapter 30, how many loaves of bread do you have Take an inventory? He said, how many loaves of bread do an inventory? Now, the bread is, is the word that you got stored up. How much, how much word do you have? Amen. If, if, if the government was to take your Bible, amen, how long would you be encouraged just simply with the word, the bread that you got stored up. Memorization and meditation. And don't tell me you can't memorize it. Don't tell, I have people all the time, you, you, and, and this, the, this irks my soul, man. If, you, if I got a pet peeve, this is it. I just can't remember scripture like you can. Yes, you could if you put an effort toward it because you can, you can memorize what you want to. Uh, you, you, you memorize a phone number and he only told it one time. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? You still know it from 1942. You memorize what you want to. You know, all the stuff that you like, man, you can just throw it out there, man. Just quote it, you know, songs you like, dates you like. Amen from bullets to amen to whatever it is you, you do. Amen. We, we memorize what we want to. Amen. How much, Jesus, how much bread do you have? Take an inventory. God, it's awesome, man. And, and sometimes we need to do an inventory to see what we have, to see what we are. The Bible said, amen, check yourself to see if you're still in the faith. It's doing a spiritual inventory, amen, to see if anything's come in unaware, amen, if you got, amen, in the left field when you should be staying, amen, center course. And the Bible said, amen, that it says that that didn't take long. It didn't take long. Jesus said, do an inventory, see how much bread you have. And the message version said, that didn't take long. That's kind of an insult spiritually. Amen. How many scriptures do you know? That didn't take long. <laughs> John 3.16. Yeah, you know, everybody knows that one. That, that didn't take that long. Five, they said, plus two fish. So five loaves and two fish. And the Bible said Jesus got them all to sit down in groups, 50 and 100. Eight, the instructions you obey determines the future you create. He got them to sit down in groups of 50 and 100. Amen. It would probably have been hard to get grown men to sit down in the green grass. Amen. Simply based on a preacher asking them. It's late in the evening. They've been there a long time. He simply taught a message to them. And now he's getting them to sit down. The instructions you obey determine the future you create. And the Bible said, amen, they look like patchwork quilt. Amen. Wildflowers spread out on the green grass. He took the five loaves and two fish, lifted his face to heaven in prayer. He blessed and broke it. What did he do when he needed a miracle? He looked toward heaven and he prayed. I don't know who I'm preaching to. Amen. The Bible said, look to the hills from whence cometh your help. Thank you, God. The Bible, amen, said that Daniel three times a day would position his face to the east and he would cry out to God. David said, evening, morning, and noon will I pray and cry aloud to the Lord and he will hear my voice. God is awesome, man. Prayer, amen, prayer is the heartbeat of the church. Prayer, amen, is the heartbeat of your family making it. And the Bible said Jesus lifted his face to heaven in prayer, blessed and broke it, gave the bread to the disciples. The disciples in turn gave it to the people, and that's just how it happens. Amen. You don't come up with a word. A word comes down. Amen. When a word comes down from heaven, amen, it resonates in your spirit. You give it to somebody else. You hand them bread out. Amen. You, you, you can be, amen, a bread distributor. You can be a word You can be a word encourager. Amen. There's people every day going, amen, through through the motions of life, down and out. Amen. Hurting. One, they got questions and concerns, and amen, with no answers or no more opinions and all you got to do is give a word to somebody it's awesome man and the bible said amen that here he lifted his face to heaven in prayer blessed and broke it gave the bread to the disciples the disciples in turn gave it to the people he did the same with the fish and they all ate their fill. the disciples gathered 12 baskets of leftovers amen if you want to know how to eat and what to eat and how to get healthy Jesus displayed it with bread and fish. Bread and fish. The Bible said Jesus was on the seashore one time, and he had some coals, and he told the disciples, he said, bring the fish you caught. Hey, bring the fish you caught. 
amen, before he fed them. He was getting them to the place they could feed themselves. Amen. He hand-fed them for a long time. Amen. But he was getting them to the place that they could feed themselves. You have got to be like David. The Bible said David learned to encourage himself. David learned to, I, I've, I've had to learn to encourage myself. Amen. Not, 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 not that I'm, I, I'm, all, not, not, I I'm not bragging and boasting. The Bible said if you make any boast or brag, brag on God. Amen. But I've had to learn to encourage myself. Amen. Because I don't often have people encouraging me. Amen. Sometimes you have more people pulling on you than you have pouring into you. And if you're not careful, you'll burn out and quit and get spiritually fatigued and throw down the Bible and pick up the bottle or whatever it may be. Amen. But what you got, you got to learn to encourage yourself. You got to be able to get in your word. Amen. And pull something out. You got to pull it out of the word and put it in your heart and walk with it. You got to say, devil, get me behind. Come on, somebody, and give God some prayer. As for me in my house. We're going to serve the Lord. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. And every tongue that rises against us, amen, thou shalt condemn. The Bible said one thing I want you to get you to see. He lifted his face to heaven in prayer. Amen. Uh, you know, and, and you don't have to do this. Amen. You can sit, you don't have to have a to lead a prayer shawl anointing oil, none of that, but it works. Amen. You don't have to have none of that to call on God. Simply the Bible says, Amen, they that call upon the Lord, name of the Lord, shall be saved and delivered. But all that stuff helps. If that helps you get in the spirit, by all means, do all that. I do. A even in my prayer chamber, amen, my altar is positioned toward the east. Amen. Because the Bible said, amen, th they that bless Jerusalem, God will bless. And amen, the Bible talks about lifting your hands in the sanctuary toward the east. And amen, I just simply like to do that. It gets my mind, amen, in the spirit. And the Bible said he gave it to the disciples. They gave it to the people. He did the same thing with the fish, and they all ate their fill. God, this is awesome, man. They, they, ate, they ate their fill. Amen. Have you ever been full? Have you ever been full? You, you know, when you get full on food, you, you, you got you got to take a break from it, and, and, and you got to let it digest. And, and, and you may take this the wrong way, and don't take this too far. You got to have balance. You, you, you know, you know, don't get too far left. You know, the Bible said, stay, keep your eyes fixed like a flint on the prize, the high prize, the mark of the high calling, which is Jesus Christ. So, so when you sat down and physically eat a meal, you can't eat but so much. And then you got to take a break from it. You, you, you know, even, even scripture and word, and this ain't for a lot of people, but it's for some people. Amen. I, I was at a place one time that I had spent like six months in, 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 a, in a prayer chamber, and, and, and I had fasted. Amen, from like, a, like 240 pounds to 175 pounds. From 240 to 175. Just reading 10, 12, 14 hours a day. And, and I had a pastor friend come to me and said, you got to get up and eat, and, and you got to get out of that Bible. And it was the best instructions that he ever gave me. Because you got to let it digest. You got to get away. With, the Bible said, Paul said, with everything in moderation. Because you can get so far in it, you can be so heavenly minded, you know earthly good. Can somebody give God some praise? And I figured out the older I got, it's better to memorize one scripture, digest it, memorize it, meditate on it, really get it, than it is read the whole Bible and not get any of it. Because I would speed read and read many chapters thinking it was pleasing God because what it was actually pleasing was my conscience. It was making me think I was more holy, but I wasn't getting none of it. It's good stuff. Give God some praise anyway. So the Bible said the disciples gathered 12 baskets of leftovers, and it's my job to preach enough and something, amen, that everybody in the house can get something, whether you're on milk and meat, amen, jo Joseph had a coat of many colors. It was a diverse coat. Amen. He had a diverse anointing. He could preach to the rich. He could preach to the poor. He could preach to the ones on the mountain and the ones in the valley. Amen. He had a great anointing. Amen. And it's my job as a preacher to give you leftovers. Not just something for tonight, but something, amen, that'll echo in your spirit tomorrow when hell shows up that'll come back up. Amen. It's my job as a preacher, amen, to give you some bread tonight that tomorrow when you're hungry or, or, or Friday when you're hungry or Saturday night when you're tested, amen, that what I spoke tonight will echo and reverberate in your spirit and it'll come back to you. That's good stuff. Somebody give God praise anyway. 
So that is our job as ministers, and it's my job to so fill you up with the Word of God. That's why, amen, that's why I'm serious about church. And I know I put some humor in there and some, and some comedy every now and then because you have to on a serious message because it balances it out. But, amen, I don't play games with God. I don't play games with church. And this ain't a game to me because hell's after you. Amen. Some of you may be, amen, on the verge of suicide or contemplating all kind of crazy stuff. And this is your last chance for God to work a miracle in your life. So I got to be here. It's good stuff. Somebody give God praise. I just come by to let you know God is here tonight. God is real. Life is worth living. Put the devil in his place. Tell him to go back to hell where he belongs. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. These people, amen, need miracles. And amen, th th these people need healings and miracles that modern medicine can't touch. And amen, these people fighting demons that, that psychologists, psychiatrists can't handle. And we living in the last days where amen, people's going to hell in a handbasket. We need the church to show up and show out with the word. God, this is, this is awesome. This is good stuff. And the Bible said the disciples gathered 12 baskets of leftovers. Amen. You, 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 should, you should go home with leftovers. Have y'all have y'all seen people that went places to eat and man, they uh, they wanted that to go basket. <laughs> it's good. It's awesome, man. You know, they they, they eat and, 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 and you know, man, they eat again and know they they're making a plate to go home. And then when they turn around, they stack the plates. They ain't ashamed to take leftovers. Amen. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Come on, somebody. If, if the food's good, it's awesome, man. If the food's good, if the word's good, take on some leftovers. More than 5,000 were, were at the supper. He fed 5,000 people with five loaves of bread and two fish. He worked a miracle in the middle of having a broken heart. This is awesome, man. He worked a miracle. Not only was, it, not only was he upset about John dying, amen, the Bible said when he saw the people like sheep with no shepherd, his heart was, but he worked a miracle, amen, at one of the worst times of his life when he was heartbroken, amen. God wants you to mature to the place that regardless of what you got going on or wrong. God, this is awesome. God wants you to mature to the place that regardless of what you got going on or what you got going wrong, when somebody needs a miracle, you can perform it. Somebody give God praise. Amen. You, you, you know, you don't need to be to the place that, you, you, know, uh, you, you know, they come to you. Today ain't the day. Today ain't the day, sister. Speak to the hand. Well, no, you can't be like that. Amen. You got to be able to leave that situation, a amen, and walk in another one where somebody needs a miracle can get it. You know, what if he would have been to all them people, amen, as a sheep, with, he looked at them as a sheep with no shepherds. I'm just tired. I come up here to rest. I'm going to rest. Y'all wasted your trip. You know, you know what, what, what if he'd have been like us? I'm on vacation, called to Linda. You, you, you know, all the people saw him, and, and, and they came up there. And he had a broken heart, but, you know, he was tired. He needed to rest. He told the disciples, let's, let's find a private place, and let's just go rest, man. You, you, you know, but, but, but he didn't do that. He didn't do that. He, 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 he performed. He, he walked out of fatigue and walked in miracle territory. He was mature enough. This is good stuff. We have got to mature to the place that we can give people a miracle even in our madness. we got to get to the place in God. It's awesome. To weep with them that weep and rejoice with them that rejoice. God, that's awesome, man. That is a good word. Weep with them that weep. Rejoice with those that rejoice. And, and mature to the place that you can feed people even when you fatigue. That you, I, because God will work a miracle anyway. All you got to do is show up. I, I, I'll prove it to you. Moses, speak to the rock. Moses hit the rock. God watered the people. Simply out of Moses' disobedience. It's awesome, man. God's going to feed the people anyway. The Bible said, verse 45, as soon as the meal was finished, Jesus insisted that the disciples get in a boat and go on ahead across to Bethsaida. He insisted that they get in a boat and go on across. And the Bible said he dismissed the congregation after sending them off. He climbed a mountain to pray. Amen. He climbed a mountain to pray. He had just prayed. God, this is awesome. 
He had just prayed and worked a miracle. Why does he feel a need to pray now? Amen. He had just prayed. He looked toward heaven. He put it, he positioned his face toward the east and he looked toward heaven and he prayed and he blessed and he broke and he worked a miracle. Amen. That fed 5,000 people and now he's praying again because he understood there was going to be backlash and what you got to be careful of. The devil ain't going to set back let you work a miracle. Amen. Would not, and not try to destroy you. He's going to try to attack you. God, this is good. So, so, so you gotta, so you gotta pray, amen, to cover any backlash of the enemy, amen. This, this is awesome, man. This, this is awesome. And, and one of the things you need to understand is, don't the Bible talks about getting lax in Zion when you do a work for the Lord. You can't kind of sigh and say, okay, man, my job's done. No, it's not because the enemy isn't happy about it, amen. He's gonna try to attack you. Assigned assassins like Sanballat, amen, to Nehemiah. He's gonna try to get you off the wall from doing the work that you're doing. God, this is awesome. Somebody give God praise. Late at night, the boat was far out at sea. Jesus was still by himself on land. He could see his men struggling. God, this is so awesome. Amen. John chapter 6, verse 48. He could see his men struggling. Amen. Have you ever saw somebody struggle? Have you ever saw a child or, or, or somebody that you love struggle? It hurts you. They were struggling with oars. The wind having come up against them. The Bible said at about 4 o'clock in the morning, the fourth watch, amen, when the enemy, amen, when, 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 when witches and demons and dark spirits, amen, when they're at their highest peak, Jesus came toward them walking on the sea. He intended, God, this is awesome, he intended to go right on by them and them struggling, and them struggling. I'm reading word for word. He intended, he intended to go right on by them, and, and, and they were struggling, and they were struggling. The Bible said you have not because you ask not. Amen. And, and I do understand, amen, that sometimes you have to let people struggle. You have to let people figure out how to fight. Please, church, get this. You have got to let and allow people to figure out how to fight on their own. If you ever want a man or a woman, if you ever want a child to grow from a girl to a woman or a boy to a man, you have got to let them fight and figure it out. God, this is good stuff. You got to let them fight and figure it out on their own. I know, Mama, you might not like this. I know to all the mamas and daddies, you might not like this because to see little angel and little buddy struggle, you're going to show up and be God. And that might be the problem because sometimes you got to let them struggle. You got to let them find their own faith. I, you, you can pray for them and you can help them. I'm not talking about a, a, amen every time and even when they're little. You know what I'm talking about. But every now and then you got to let them figure it out and fight on their own because you ain't always going to be there. Because what you're going to do is if you fight all their battles and you figure out everything for them and you pay all their way, time's coming. The hourglass is turned over. You ain't always going to be here. And what you have created is somebody, amen, that is finished when you are. It's, it's awesome, man. Somebody give God praise anyway. And I, I want to read it again because the Bible said he could see his men struggling with oars, the wind having come up again. Now, not only are they struggling, the wind is against them. And the Bible said at 4 o'clock, and they couldn't even see. Amen. No lights, no lanterns. Amen. Amen. Jesus came toward them. Walk. He intended to go right on by them. This is good stuff. He intended to go right on by them. But when they saw him walking on the sea, they thought it was a ghost and screamed, scared out of their wits. I, I, I want you to see this. I want you to see this. Amen. That, 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 this, this is awesome, man. And, and I, I know a lot of traditional church folks ain't going to like this, but I done got to the place that I really just don't care. And the Bible said he intended to go right on by them. They saw him walking on the sea. They thought it was a ghost, screamed, scared out of their wits. Amen. Here, they, they, no faith. Fear. Not a good fear. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, not that fear. They, they, they have the spirit of fear. God didn't give the spirit of fear, power, love, and sound mind. They got the spirit of fear. This is this, this good stuff. They, they got the spirit of fear. And what, let's, let's watch what happens. The Bible said, and scared at their, wit, they had their wits in. The, David talked about being at my wits, my, my ropes, my, wit, my wisdom's in. I don't know what to do, where to go, out of options, no opinions. They had a spirit of fear. And, and the Bible said Jesus was quick to comfort them. Jesus was quick to comfort them. He intended to go by them. But because the spirit of fear gripped them, 
It stopped. And let me tell you something. I have people all the time talk about, well, if you had more faith. I, I, I've heard preachers, amen, amen, take it off their back and put it on your back, amen, because I've seen people come up wanting a healing and, and the pastor lay hands on them and they didn't receive the healing. And, amen, somehow he felt like that diminished him or made him less of a preacher or God less of, less of a deity, and they'd put it on the people. Well, if you had more faith, no, baby. Let me, faith got them to church. Faith put their, put their clothes on. Come on, somebody, give God here, they had no faith at all, but God moved on their behalf. I don't know who I'm preaching to, amen. The reason you're here is because God's been good to you, because you ain't always had that kind of faith. The Bible said he intended to go by them, amen. Saw, they saw him walking on his head. They thought it was a ghost. They screamed, scared out of their wits. Jesus was quick to come. He said, courage, it's me. Don't be afraid. As soon as he climbed in the boat, the wind died down. As soon as he climbed in the boat, the wind died down, and there was a calm. Amen. Have, have, you, have you ever had somebody you liked and you had so much confidence in when they came in the room, it changed your spirit? Amen. You just need the right person in the boat with you. You just need the right person on your team. God, this is so awesome. Jesus was quick to comfort them and said, courage, it's me. Don't be afraid. God worked miracles, amen, that a lot of churches don't want to preach and acknowledge. Amen. The Bible said, amen, when John was to be born, amen, that Zachariah and Elizabeth laughed about it. He didn't believe it could happen. His daddy didn't believe he could be born. And he had, he had so little faith that God had to give him a, design, a divine zip and lip and shut his mouth to keep him from sabotaging his miracle is how little of faith he had, but God still worked a miracle let me tell you something when god's got a plan for your life amen and, and it's great even you can't even mess it up sometimes with somebody give god a shot the reason you still here is because god's got a plan for you so great god this is good and the bible said jesus is quick to come with courage it's me don't be afraid as soon as he climbed in the boat the wind dived down they were stunned shaking their heads wondering what was going on they didn't understand what he had done at supper and none of this had yet penetrated their hearts. And the Bible goes on to say, oh, man. So now, so now what? Now the miracle they saw hadn't even penetrated their heart. Amen. It, it, they, some of you that have had miracles work for you, but, but it hadn't even dawned on you yet how good God's been to you. It's, it's amazing, man. They, 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 some of you, amen, that have walked through miracles, but it hadn't dawned on you yet just how close you was for going to hell. Amen. That's why the Bible said, I'll yet give him praise. I got a yet praise coming because I don't even know how good God's been to me. The, the reason the devil fights you is because he knows how good God's been. Some of you don't even know how good God's been to you. Will somebody stand up and give your God a praise? I'll yet praise him. And the Bible says, amen, here, let's go a little further, find a worship song, I'm coming to an end. The Bible said, amen, they, they beached the boat at Gennesaret, tied it to the landing. As soon as they got out of the boat, word got around fast, people ran this way and that, bringing their sick on stretchers. Now, amen, they saw the miracle, and now they bring in the afflicted and the demon-possessed, and they heard it was Jesus, amen, wherever he went, village or town, country crossroads, they bought their sick to the marketplace and begged him to let them touch the edge of his coat, and whoever touched him became well. God, this is awesome. Whoever touched him became well. I, I, don't, know about, I don't know about you, but I was made well because he touched me. March the 3rd, I'll be in God 20 years. March the 3rd will be 20 years right there at 120 Prison Farm Road that I called on God, and he healed me. And I was made well 20 years ago. Amen. A case of the alcoholic with many addictions and afflictions and problems and pains. Amen. But I stand here 20 years later preaching when I was given death dates and false prophecies. It was spoke of by, by teachers that I'd never amount to anything, that I'd be in prison by the time I was 18, and I was just like my uncles, and I was just like this, and I was just like that. But 20 years later, I'm still preaching the gospel. He touched me, and I'm well. The reason you're here is because he touched you. The reason you ain't, I feel holy. Stand to your feet and thank him because he touched you. He touched me. He touched me. Amen. Am I perfect? No, but I've been touched. I, have, I, have I made mistakes? Yeah, baby. But I didn't wallow in it. He touched me. Give God some praise. Amen. Thank you for touching me, Lord. Thank you for touching me. God, this is awesome. Thank you for touching me. I thank God that he broke laws. I thank God that he broke laws. Brother Kenny, 
He, he, he walked in the house with a dead girl, and he touched her hands and said, Talitha, rise, little girl. He, he touched something dead. Capital punishment crime. No rabbi should touch anything dead. That's man's law. But I thank God that he touched me. I was a dead man walking, but he touched me. I feel Holy Ghost. Come on, somebody. I was headed nowhere, but he touched me. And here I am. Somebody praise him tonight. Thank you, God. Woo. These altars are open if you want to find yourself a place. Pray and talk to God. You may have a spiritually dead daughter. Amen. Tonight, he can touch her right where she's at. You may have a spiritually dead son tonight. He can touch him right where he's at. Paul said he would stand in proxy. That means... Paul said, though I'm not there in body, I'm there in spirit. God, it's awesome. Uh, although whoever you're praying over tonight ain't here in body, a, a, amen, that you're there in spirit. And whoever you pray for immediately gets a thought. This is awesome, man. God spoke this to me one time because I was, I was questioning thoughts and prayers. And the Spirit of God spoke to me and said, He answers every prayer. When you pray for a loved one immediately right then, that, that there's a thought comes in their spirit of either quitting wrong or starting right. Either conviction from bad or thoughts of righteousness. But immediately when you pray, something happens in the spirit. God, uh, it's, it's awesome. Just trust it. Just trust it. Where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst. When any two or three are touching anything in agreement, it shall come to pass. I just believe it, amen. You can get to the place to where, to where you just believe it. Ah, thank you, God. Father, we love you. Amen. Sometimes you just got to go on. Jesus was, was hurt because the beheading of John. And the Bible said he got, and he saw the multitudes of people, 5,000 men. Some say thirteen to 15,000 with the women and children. And the Bible said his heart was broke because they was like a sheep with no shepherd. They was like a sheep with no shepherd. Amen. This is awesome, man. Like a sheep with no shepherd. And, and, and I want to talk to you about children having no shepherd. If, if he was worried about sheep having a shepherd, how much more is he worried about a daughter having a mom and daddy? If he was worried about a sheep, a mammal animal, if he was worried about a mammal animal having an overseer, how much more is he concerned about children having a strong man or a strong woman? It's awesome, man. And I know we're living in the last days, and they sad, bad times, and, and there's probably everybody in here knows the case where a mama is addicted, afflicted, had the picture, a daddy is in prison or deadbeat, and it, 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 the cases are innumerable. But if God was concerned about an animal mammal with a caregiver. How much more is he concerned about this generation needing a strong leader? It's good stuff. Some of you are the strongest leader in your family. Some of you is all your family's got. I, I hate to put some weight on you. I, I hate to put weight on you. But some of you is the only thing standing between your family and a demon. I hate to put that weight on you, but, but looking around this church, I, 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 I could count a dozen of you that you're the only one. Amen. If it wasn't for you, Amen. you're the standard that God lifted up. I, I know the devil makes you think that you ain't doing nothing. God spoke to me yesterday and reminded me that Noah worked 120 years, built a boat that only floated one time, only saved eight people. That's awesome, baby. Look at your neighbor and say, you are doing something. You are doing something. You do matter. Your labor is not in vain. Your, your labor ain't in vain. Your prayers ain't in vain. Because some of you would already be buried your people if you wasn't standing there. you the standard. When the enemy comes in like a flood, the Spirit of God will lift up a standard. You are the standard. God, that's good to me. you the standard. Father, we love you, we praise you, we appreciate you. God, we thank you for the power of your love, your mercy, God. We thank you for your word, your grace. God, grace is much more than, than unmerited favor. It's the power to go through something, God. God, I, I saw the grace on Jesus in Mark chapter 6 when he was heartbroken over John being beheaded and he saw the sheep with no shepherd. But still, he worked a miracle in miracle territory because you gave him grace for it. 
Thank you, God, for your love, your mercy, your peace, and your protection. These altars are open if you want to find yourself a place to pray, talk to God. If you need salvation, if you need Holy Spirit, baptism, amen, seek God, seek the gifts, read like you've never read before, study and pray, amen. We, 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 we're living in a time with, 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 with the intensity of demonic bondage and, amen, assigned assassins spiritually trying to take you out. Amen. Enemies trying to draw wedges in families between couples. And amen. God hates divorce. God, loved the, God loves the divorcees. God hates divorce. If, 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 you want, if you want a quick ticket to a divorce, get you one of these and, and, and get some of all of it. Get, get, get TikTok, Instagram, MySpace, Facebook. Get some of all that. You want a divorce? Tap into this. It's good stuff. You want to hold your stuff together? Put that down and pick this up. It, it still works. It still works. Amen. I'm, I'm, I'm done. Worship song will play out. Y'all shake hands. Y'all fellowship. Be back Sunday morning. There's a revival spirit in the house. Amen. God's here. He's a healer. He's a deliverer. He's a healer. He's a deliverer. Amen. Thank God for faith. Amen. But I thank you.